oh no, here he goes again, banging on about housing. And yes, housing is really, really important. And I, I've said this before, I know whenever I do a video on housing, it gets very, very so views. But to be honest, I've, I've made this point so many times. We are in a housing crisis here in the UK, and we need to start taking this seriously. If we do, this can become a major uh, political issue, not only for the parties, which would again force them to actually tackle this issue, but also this is a massive opportunity as well, not only to really solve a housing crisis, but also really address the energy crisis at the same time that we are facing. We are missing out on a massive possibility of a massive green revolution um, and housing revolution, which we could, could combine together that could really help the most um, poorest families and those most facing the, the housing crisis at the sharp end of the stick. So it is really important that we talk about this. And again, it's my channel. So again, I'll, I'll choose what I talk about. But I know when I do videos like this, not a lot of people watch them because, again, unfortunately, it's not as big a political issue as it really should be. And yet we've been in a housing crisis since, like, what? 2010 since it first started being that word started being used and i i've said before we need to start escalating this to start making people realize that we aren't just in a housing crisis we are sleepwalking into a housing disaster because of the sacred cow that is the housing market here in the uk and no one dare talk about that uh, dare talk about that because oh might have political consequences but we've got to tackle these issues we've got to tackle this head on and not be afraid or else we'll be in a housing disaster before we open our eyes before we even know where we are so as always uh, thank you very much uh, to those people who do support the channel like i say please do remember to hit that like share and subscribe button and of course down below there are links to my patreon page and a one of station link called buy me coffee we can well buy me coffee and as always these the uh, youtube memberships down below as well so Let's go diving into this today. This comes from the Byline Times, the title of Behind the Green Curve, Britain's Missing Housing Revolution. Energy is the issue right up in the political agenda. Bills are increasing fast, with a big height in the, in the price set by uh, the government scheduled for this April. Listen to the voices in the right-wing press and coming out of the Conservative uh, Net Zero Scrutiny Group, and the main culprits are the green levies and the subsidies to the renewables. Read the culture, cultural warriors like the academic Matthew Goodwin, and they have the climate change agenda set firmly set in their sights. And this is a foretaste of the battles to come. The climate deniers have indeed morphed into skeptics. They now profess to accept the science, but claim that it is too difficult and expensive to do anything about it. They may have changed the tactics and tone, but they remain deniers at heart. As Boris Johnson's time of prime ministers appears to be drawing maybe to a close, climate change does look set to be the new culture war battleground, as the hard right looks to rally around the figureheads to try and reverse Johnson's very tepid but real acceptance of the climate change agenda. The climate sceptics, of course, never mention that UK households are particularly exposed to the spikes in electricity and gas prices because Britain has indeed the worst housing quality in Western Europe the most energy inefficient homes. And as the map shows below, on a cold day, UK households experience three times the heat loss of their German or even Scandinavian counterparts. People cannot see the heat loss, but they will indeed show in their bills. As you can see here at the map. So, yep. Yeah. The government's two efforts to try and address the coldest and leakiest housing uh, in Europe have been disastrous failures. David Cameron's flagship scheme, the grossly misna misnamed Green Deal, tried to aspire to be Europe's most innovative and transforming energy efficient program. However, its annual target of 2 million retrofitted homes struggled to reach just than 6,000, less than 1% of its actual target. The government's model of high interest private loans through an independent finance company just simply did not deliver. Its broader failure was highlighted recently in an article in the Carbon Brief showing how Cameron's anti-green measures not only added £2.5 to the UK's energy bills since 2015. 
The Conservatives' second attempt to try and be energy efficient, of course, the Greens Homes Grant Scheme, was launched by Boris Johnson's 10-point Green Industrial Revolution Plan. It was contracted out to the US global consulting firm ICF, of which 1.5 billion was promised in its first year, and only 17 million, less than 5%, was actually spent. The scheme was then scrapped, having just reached just 10% of the 600,000 homes that the Chancellor had indeed promised to be improved. This was then contracted out top-down householder as a customer model has failed. Yet, the government is still produ producing a largely individual householder-based approach without setting an annual target for the housing renovations. And this is not just a UK issue. The swirl and effect of, of transformation of housing stock is one of the central tests of the Europe's net zero ambitions. All the advantages of focusing on building refurbishment are clearly laid out in this European Commission document, not least ensuring substantial emission reductions before 2030 and creating thousands of jobs. So is Europe up to the challenge. The agreement hammered out between the German Social Democrats, the Greens and the Liberals represents the most serious attempt yet by any national government to actually develop an eco-social market economy. The, con the combination of these three parties drawn from very distinctive political traditions, along with the backing of the con Confederation of German Industry, indicates the breadth of the coalition mobilising around the climate change agenda. On energy efficient and renovations, the new German coalitions can even build on the impressive work undertaken by previous governments operating the country's social market model, which gives a very crucial role to the state finance and intervention and regulatory support. Thus, in 2020, the State Reconstruction Bank, KFW, in its emergency efficiency program, awarded loans and grants worth of 27 billion euros for the re renovation of almost half a million residential units. Contrast this with Rishi Sunak's green home schemes is astonishing. The German programme is now being strengthened. It covers both residential and non-residential buildings. Wholesale retrofits as well as partial include grants for whole scale range of technologies as well as seismic measurements such as the installation of digital technologies to try and optimise the consumption plus grants to be able to ensure that these projects are indeed professionally planned with new building owners, able to consult energy efficient apparatus experts. And of course, France, where buildings account for at least 28% of all carbon emissions and overall emissions have been reduced by just 3% since 1990, is even now looking to follow this German example. The High Council on Climate Change has called for a rapid increase in the number of high performance energy renovations underpinning by the generous support scheme combining loans and grants. From the 1st of January this year, all French renovation efforts have been streamlined into a single national energy re 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 rejuvenation service called France Renovo. Last year, the service accepted over 670,000 applicants. So that's basically what the green new home deal that our government offered. They've surpassed that in less than a year. So it is possible to do this. Um, France has shown that, but it just goes to show you just how poor our government is actually doing uh, doing stuff like this. More than 10 times, of course, the number from the 2016, and of course, the Minister for Housing, Emmanuel uh, Ralgon, has also set out one of the million reservations for 2022. This plan emphasises the need to support low-income economic households to ensure that this is indeed an equitable transition. The old industrial areas of northern France around Lille are already showing that this can be done. In Spain and Italy and elsewhere, each of the national uh, rational recovery plans is, is complementing the European Green Deal and has sufficient energy efficiency and renovations components. What we here see here is a coordinated public sector action at a national, regional and local levels designed to both encourage individual and collective initiatives. There is an acceptance of the government investment and strong regulation in contrast to the very small state advocates on the Conservatives' right. The scale of task here in the UK is far is obviously very significant. And the, in the Institution for Engineering, Engineering and Technology, is in its report of Scaling Up Retrofit 2050, advises that nearly every home in the UK needs to be upgraded with energy efficient measures at a rate of more than at least 1.5 homes every minute to 2050. That is just less than 800,000 a year. 
Labour leader Keir Starmer has pledged that the Labour government would spend at least six billion a year for a decade to try and retrofit these 19 million homes to a minimum standard of energy performance in Brand C. This is very significant, but less than a quarter of what Germany is already spending. The Energy Efficient uh, Energy Group, uh, a campaign lobby composed of charities and business organizations, including the Confederation of British Industry, is calling on the Prime Minister to try and prioritize cutting the energy bill through better installation. The chairwoman, Sir, uh, Sarah Kinzer Walton, says that this is a permanent solution to lower energy bills and reducing the demand for energy efficient measures. In the short term, the EIG wants the government to try and provide additional support such as expanding the warm homes discount for vulnerable households to prevent a fuel poverty emergency. But the IEG is also calling for a new 3.6 billion grant or subsidy scheme to help out all households to insulate their homes. The insulation has also been backed up by MPs on the Conservative and Environmental Network, but the smaller climate skeptic net zero security group has the ear of the Conservative press and is dominating all the media discussion. On the initial that has real potential that comes from obviously 11 major cities forming the core cities group along with the london boroughs have also come together to seek large-scale private investor funding for low carbon projects the big cities know that capital resources need to be mobilized to scale of this mass retrofitting and they cannot simply rely on the misery treasury which is under currently on the sunak is looking to very reassert the thatcherite mindset at COP26, the Climate Change Summit last November, Mark Carney, the former governor of the Bank of England, confirmed the role of the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero. He claimed that there is at least a total of $130 trillion and assets under management ready to be deployed for low carbon processes across the globe. NatWest claims at least £100 billion target for financing de decarbonisation by 2025. The Core City Initiative is designed to unlock these resources and to enable cities to undertake this initiative on whole neighbourhood efficient energy schemes. While the government is currently in disarray and its political options are paralysed as the climate sceptic right looks to try and reassert the small state thinking, it is likely that cities and other, and other municipalities will have to negotiate with the banks and learn to do it for themselves. So this is, of course, as you can see here, it's just shocking just to show you like the failure that this conservative government has had over like the past couple of years just in terms of actually trying to help out on this i mean france in a year did exactly what johnson's green home initiative uh, was set to try and do over the next 10 so we know this is possible we know it can be done you just have to fund these initiatives properly for them to be able to do the problem is we have a government and a currently a treasury led by Rishi Sunak who just does not want to spend the money. Because as we've said before, if people realize that the conservatives can spend this amount of money and get these projects done, then, well, how about, you know, spending all that money on maybe something else that's going to be positive for the country as well? But of course, well, we can't do that. Um, because as we said, we've got some very small state-minded individuals currently in the Conservative Party that really, really need to be flushed out. Uh, and those, of course, are the free market fundamentalists and ultimately the mass Brexiteer majority that needs to be flushed away from the Conservative Party. But that is obviously a topic for another time. But please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one of nation called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all next time.